Shazam puts the wonder in Wondrous. It's dark and gothic, yet super fun and superhero y. It made me grin from ear to ear from start to finish. There's my review. Uh, edit, upload, export, all the rest of it, we're done. Critique it? Alright, fine. Shazam brings us the origin story of Billy Batson, an orphan kid that just can't find his home. And look, there's a whole heap of superhero-y stuff, but really this film constantly boils down to people trying to find their home, trying to find a place to fit in. The good versus evil stuff is nothing new, but like Deadpool utilizing its quirky style to hide a bare bones plot, Shazam brings heart and real human emotion in to hide the tried and true superhero formula. And Shazam might do it better? At least it's a lot nicer to watch. The entire cast of characters provides so many memorable moments before a single punch or zap leaves a finger. The fact that they managed to make six kids and two adults, who all share varying degrees of screen time, feel like a legitimate family with various quirks and relationships at play is a stroke of genius. Shazam takes its good time to get to the superhero stuff and I couldn't be happier. Anyone crucial to the plot or Billy's growth as a character feels important and that is important. And speaking of Billy, Asher Angel nails the mid-pubescent boy in a way that Mark Hamill could only dream of. What are you talking about? He's reckless and rude, in no way a hero should be. He's a real rat bag, which just made all the trial and tribulations he goes through all the more satisfying. Especially compared to the original Billy Batson, who was like a goody two-shoes that got approached by a random dude in an alleyway and got led down to a train station where he turned into- it was a lot less it didn't make much sense. But without a doubt, the best part of this film is the dark haired mania of Jack Dylan Grayson. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> That's crazy, right? Seriously, Freddy is the secret heart of this film. From his insane, nerdy outbursts to the more serious and emotionally charged beats, Grazer is proving to be quite the child actor. The dude did almost single handedly hold the It reboot together. Admittedly, Skarsgård was kind of holding the other hand. Anyway, I love this dude a lot, and someone else I love is Zachary Levi, and he was born to be in this cape. Some old guy brought me to a temple, and he made me say Shazam. Every frame of Levi as Shazam is a gift from the gods. Not only is he channeling the joy and immaturity of a kid that's just been given superpowers, but Levi's own whimsical love for life is also on full display. I guess in the end, I kind of wanted Asher to joy up his performance a little bit more to match Zachary. He kind of stuck with the broody teen a little bit longer than he probably should have, but at the same time, I guess it is a completely different body that he transforms into, and with that, maybe a slightly different mindset. I also just need to write a sentence containing the words, holy shit, that suit is actual perfection in spandex. I kind of love how much they embrace the ham, and another slice of ham is always the villain, and I'm just so glad Mark Strong has finally gotten the opportunity to play a DC villain. It seems crazy that he's never played one before. Strong's Dr. Savannah is actually fairly well integrated with Shazam's tone and premise. I don't want to spoil it, but it is quite good. Taking the age-old fighting someone with the same power set trope and giving it a purpose. Almost. Despite a shockingly good setup, by the third act, Savannah kind of loses all nuance. He turned into a generic grey grumpy man until the films close, and it was ultimately disappointing to see all that build up fall away to yet another forgettable baddie. But hey, maybe Mark Strong will get a second time round playing a baddie. Maybe second time. The second time, maybe, maybe the script will be kinder to him. The second time. Is the joke funny yet? The film's also got a really weird look. Stemming from a horror background, director David S. Sandberg flips from gothic 80s horror to a naturalistic present day faster than you can say well. And for me, it kind of works. It's like these two different genres trying to coexist. And that all kind of manifests itself through the good and bright Billy and the dark and gloomy Savannah. And this film is legitimately a little bit scary sometimes. Like, I did see a family leave in a scene where people are thrown out of buildings and demons eat people. All the while, it's fairly a fun movie, but I know that my fellow Shazam watcher, he found a little bit of a tonal whiplash, so if you don't enjoy that kind of feeling, I totally get it, and it might be a bit of a downplayer for you. I enjoyed it, but it's not for everyone. But something that I would have really liked to have seen is maybe a found footage version of this film, because some of the best bits are when Billy and Fred are just hanging out and Freddy's filming him, and look, the, the, the double act in this movie is amazing. The film only had a budget of around 50 million dollars, and what's done with it is incredible, though the visual effects did often suffer from a smaller scale budget. But hey, it's a comic book movie, and a fun one at that, it's not Winter Soldier, you don't need to have realistic action, you know, it can be a little bit floppy. Floppy? 
And the action of the film is pretty top notch. There's certainly more of a focus on smaller scale set pieces, which are all so much fun and help to show off Billy struggling to come to grips with his newfound powers. But when things heat up, we get some of the most energetic, vibrant, and still somehow cohesive superhero action I've seen in a long time. And civilian and property damage is kept to a minimum. Good shift, DC. <laughs> Almost. And you know me, I love my score, and this film has one. It's triumphant, big and magical. It pulls upon the sounds of John Williams and Alan Silvestri, but it's often just a lot of lovely noise. There's no real melody or motif or anything that I'm not gonna find humming to myself and remembering for ages, and that is really important to me. And if I had one big whopper of a complaint, it would be that the third act is one big whopper of an act. It overstays its welcome, and sometimes it kind of just harms the emotional arc that's going on, it just kind of draws away the tension a little bit. It's all fun, but it just kind of, all the pacing is gone. At this point, I feel like there must be a two and a half hour, like, ad revenue minimum for films to earn money. Is that how Hollywood works now? Maybe? Did you believe? Yeah! You want to try invisibility? But overall, I'm just happy to see that DC is worrying about making great films now before making a larger universe. Sure, Freddy owns a Batarang and there are illusions of a larger DC universe, but Shazam acts as a great film first, a great Shazam film second, a spiritual successor to Big third, and a franchise installment around like fifth. Listing things really ruins that saying, doesn't it? I'm bad with sayings. Shazam is, so far, my favourite superhero piece of media released this year. There's still a lot to come, but before those things, why not give a good film a little bit of money? Go see Shazam as soon as you can. And if you're wondering why I didn't make the big Shazam joke where I say Shazam and I turn into Shazam, it's because I'm not the chosen one. Oh, for God's sake. And if you're after more the S word, I suggest Jeff John's new 52 relaunch of Shazam, and for some animated fun, check out Young Justice Season 1, Episode 19. It was my introduction to the character, and if you want to hear me talking about Shazam in full with some spoilers, why not check out our spoiler cast on the word over on Spotify. Just search Eto's Catch Up and you'll find it. There's a link down below. Make sure you go and see Shazam! <laughs>